done some studies that, that are yet to be published, but will be soon, that show that about 5,000 trauma patients could survive their injuries if they had access to blood in a pre-hospital environment. And we know that of the patients who receive pre-hospital blood, about half are non-trauma or, or, or medical, right? So if you extrapolate that 5,000 out, you know, there's probably another 5,000 or more. And then there's the pediatric population, which were included in the study. That's probably another 500 to 1,000 patients per year. So it's, it's going to be north of 10,000. Uh, we feel very comfortable with that number. The other piece of data, if you look at the 40,000 plus traffic fatalities that we have a year in the United States, if you look at the National Highway Transportation Safety Agency data, 18,000 of those patients who died were alive at the time that the paramedics got to them. So if they're alive and we get to them with blood and we can extend that window of survivability to get to the trauma center where we can intervene, very comfortable we could uh, save a fairly significant percentage of that 18,000. The most robust whole blood program we have in the country is with the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council. That Southwest Texas region has a whole blood program and they have whole blood on, on their ground ambulances. They've shown very nicely that the paramedics can indeed identify patients who need it, so they're not wasting it on patients who don't need it. They also have a rotation system where if a, if a whole unit you know, of whole blood is on a ground ambulance, it's not being used, as it gets closer to its expiration date, they, they cycle it back to the hospital. And of course, trauma centers can use that blood very, they, they use a lot of blood, right? So they, they can cycle that back. And so there's very little, if any, waste of the products with that program. For EMS agencies right now, they're reimbursed based on the transportation they provide, not on the care they provide. And you can imagine a, a unit of blood and, and all the other costs associated with that, with storage, with training, with, with everything else, there's, there's costs associated with even thinking about starting a blood program and it's for an EMS agency. And then not to get reimbursed for that specific treatment. Uh, it makes it very uh, difficult for EMS agents that, that, that really already have a tight budget. There's a legislative approach. Uh, not sure exactly what that looks like just yet. It's going to be a combination of uh, a regulatory approach, working with the federal agencies, uh, a legislative approach, probably both at the federal and state level. We're talking about potential Medicaid funding, Medicare funding level grants potentially to help support these things. So it's going to be a, a package of advocacy, uh, really a broad-based uh, practice of advocacy. Mm -hmm.